remix version of it. Oh. And you say, what's that? I don't know. Someone made it though, and they've been playing it like, all day for a solid week. Like a would it be? It goes like, <laughs> you know, kind of like the movie like, where you're like, I know. The, oh God, what is this? There's a, a Nutcracker movie out. Is it? Does it maybe from? Oh, that? you know, it might be that. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Um, kind of maybe that's what it is. Right? <laughs> I just watched that video. I should have waited till after the show. It's definitely a sugar. <laughs> sugar what do you think, Roger? Would, would would you? Uh, what what advice would you give to Joe? I would the... tell Joe, let that be your last time you do anything like that ever. Again. <laughs> but he he didn't. There's another shorter video where he's like Lord calling from Roger. his car. He's like, I know you. I know you talked about me. It's like what. <laughs> I heard you need an addition to your house. <laughs> I heard building codes between no, you. No, the, the fact that he says he says good morning to her again says soon to be my everything. No, no, that's <laughs> this is not the sort of thing that Roger's gonna like. Yeah. We know this I, about I Roger. Well, He's yes, because he has it. daughters. You got you're scared for people like this. You know? I'm scared like, for anyway. This is like you don't need you don't need that in your life. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is why YouTube needs a better interface so people understand the difference between public, unlisted, and private videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's like the, I, I I'm not I think the guy should be put away not for his weird and creepiness but for his lack of being able to grow a proper goatee. It's weird. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's I, weird. I, I I will Listen, never. He who is without facial hair problems <laughs> must be jailed. Yeah. Must be jailed. <laughs> That's why I don't try because I know I'll end up like Joe. Joe, grow the first whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried. It's bad. I know. I know. I know that personally. I just look like a Chinese gambler that's been in a mm -hmm. yeah it, right. that's been at one of those gambling casinos. I know, that, and I've been waiting to do my short film about Chinese gamblers so that I can get you to grow that. <laughs> what is this? You, the lead, yeah. Mahjong, craps. I don't care. <laughs> we are going to talk about Go, but the other two games are Japanese today. Like, sir, this isn't money. It's a parking ticket. Good morning, oh, internet. internet. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning, Tom. I just <laughs> think about Julia. you. Good morning, Shannon. Good morning, <laughs> see, Lynn. See, the thing, Lynn, is if you do that same accent, but you say you shouldn't have done that. It's just you shouldn't <laughs> have done that. You shouldn't have done that. No, it's like nice. <laughs> I, I empathize. I empathize with Joe. I feel bad. Sure. I, I, I don't we think I have a little Joe in I us. I don't think he's evil or anything. I just don't think that was um Yeah. It's bad judgment. In this case. Yeah, bad judgment. Uh it should be a private video. That's all. No. Yeah. Just know it's just like when you do anything, email, video, just know it can be sent to anybody. Anybody. Uh fifteen thirty is when we will start the show. Are you guys ready? Yep. Yes. Yeah. All right. Good morning. When I say fifteen thirty, it means nothing to any of you. I realize <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, it's a really clock on. It's his mental clock. I understand. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, thanks to you. That's right, you who supports independent tech news. If you want to do it directly and have more in effect, become a member at Patreon.com/slash/DTNS. <laughs> This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, December 7th, 2018 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. And from Studio Hack 5, I'm Shannon Morse. From Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. And from the same general region as Tom and Sarah, I'm Roger Chang, the show's <laughs> producer. Ah, uh, we've got Len and Shannon back. Hey. hey! Gang's all here. It's a real Friday again. Yay, <laughs> finally. We got hats on. We got Shannon. We got Len doing some art. And yep. we're going to talk about facial recognition after we tell you a few other tech things you should know. Walmart announced plans to buy art.com, which sells a variety of art, as the name suggests, and posters and wall decor. It's been around quite some time, since 1998, in fact, and will continue as a standalone site, so say the companies, but products will also be available on other Walmart sites, such as jet.com and hayneedle.com. The deal is expected to close in early 2019. 
Mozilla CEO Chris Beard wrote in a blog post that, quote, by adopting Chromium, Microsoft hands over control of even more of online life to Google. He noted that if Chromium-based browsers get enough market share, developers won't worry about compatibility on non-Chromium-based browsers like Firefox. Oh, I just wish Microsoft would have done it with the quantum engine, with the Firefox. <laughs> uh, phone maker Essential has acquired India's Cloud Magic startup less than three months after that startup said it was going to shut down its Newton Mail app. Cloud Magic launched as Cloud Magic in 2013. It was a free service then and then relaunched in 2016 as a paid service under the name Newton Mail. All right, let's talk about games, games that the AIs play, Shannon. <laughs> All the AIs. An artificial intelligence platform known as Alpha Zero learned games learn the games of Go, chess, and Shogi from scratch without help from humans by using deep neural networks. AlphaZero was unveiled by DeepMind Technologies, a British AI subsidiary of Alphabet in research published in Science on November 6th. In each game, AlphaZero was only given the basic rules of how to play, then it would then play millions of games against itself and determine which strategies work best through reinforcement learning. The training and learning process took nine hours for chess, that's it. 12 hours for Shogi and 13 days for Go. It then went out to beat the world's three best AIs at their games, Stockfish at chess, Elmo at Shogi and Alpha Go Zero at Go. So this is a heck of an accomplishment <laughs> uh, in unsupervised learning. Uh, there are all kinds of things to talk about, you know, regarding the fact that games have a limited set of rules and all the information is available. And, and so you, you shouldn't be too worried about what this means. But it did strike me that the three best players of chess, Shogi and Go are all AI now. Right. And this is just the better version of it because humans got less involved. <laughs> it also struck me as interesting that this is one of the few excellent and amazing examples that we have of artificial intelligence because a lot of times AI as the word is used as, as a marketing term when in, in actuality it's used just as this function. So this is a perfect example of what AI could be used for. Yeah. And, and, and if you don't pick up on what we're saying, when you, even though these games are complicated, I mean, it took it 13 days to train on go. Uh, the information is complete. You always know what the rules of Go are. You always know where all the pieces are, right? Uh, where AI is going to have challenges is when you don't have all the information. Right. Like, you know, I don't know, is it sunny out? Uh, should I put a coat on? Is it cold? I can pick up all these things without knowing all the information, without even looking out the window in various ways as a human. I can intuit things. Those aren't even the best examples of that. But there are things we can do with incomplete information that AI can't do. So does this make you feel like you never want to play board games ever with a robot? Not against a robot, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, why would I? That, well, you know, that's the thing, right? When you play against the computer now, it means the computer is hobbling itself. It's not as yep. good as it could be. Otherwise, it would beat you every time. <laughs> Qualcomm announced the 8-core Snapdragon 8 CX for always connected Windows laptops and 2-in-1 convertible PCs. It's the largest processor that Qualcomm has ever made, and the company says it'll also be the first 7 nanometer chip for a PC platform and the biggest performance leap for Snapdragon chip ever, including up to 2 gigabits per second cellular connectivity. It also draws 7 watts of power, which is about half of the comparable Intel U series of chips, and supports up to 16 gigabytes of LPDDR 4x ram and nvme drives qualcomm says that the new andrino 680 extreme gpu which is inside the 8cx is twice as fast as the one in its previous snapdragon 850 for windows laptops and is also 60 percent more power efficient it also supports two 4k hdr external monitors simultaneously of note qualcomm also expects the first pcs with 8cx to ship in the se second half of 2019 didn't say who it would be with, but no. And in fact, Lenovo came out on stage during the announcement and talked about it without ever saying, and we'll be shipping a product with this inside, which a lot of people noted the absence of that statement. Maybe you just forgot. I don't know. 
It is pretty cool though that this is the first one from Qualcomm that is purpose built specifically for Windows. So they're not reusing something from like smartphone chips uh, and then sticking it into a laptop. So we should be able to see a lot more of things like, you know, the multitasking and productivity like they mentioned. And they also mentioned during uh, the, the talk that it could do, you know, light gaming like Minecraft, but you're still not going to be get able to get things like uh, heavy duty, uh, tasks like you know uh, video editing or or 4k video editing or or heavy gaming that you can normally do on an nvidia gpu out of this but this is still really great and it's awesome competition yeah and, and there, the apps for this will be a little bit less available mm -hmm. as well but microsoft has done things like allow you to compile your 64-bit windows apps for universal, uh, which makes it easier to port them over if you've developed them for x86. So this is a big deal. This is Qualcomm going head to head with Intel. These are seven nanometer chips. I don't know if you caught that when Sarah mentioned that Intel doesn't have seven nanometer chips. So even though these aren't as powerful as the most powerful Intel chips that are 10 nanometer, I mean, Qualcomm it is in the game at the thin and light level, but they are in the game for legitimate PC performance. Well, what's interesting is Intel has already announced that they're working on their seven nanometer, which will probably come out in a couple of years. Um, and I do not think that that Qualcomm's efforts along with AMD's lighting a fire under their corporate behinds uh, is, is, is helping uh, their, their cause. So they're, I mean, they've, they've been a little too relaxed at the top for, for way too long. You think Intel has been? Intel has. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people would agree with you. All right. Let's check in on what's going on with Huawei. Uh, since we we talked to you last, uh, when we mentioned to you yesterday the arrest of CFO Meng Wanzhou in Canada, Huawei has appointed Chairman Liang Hua as acting CFO. Uh, in the bail hearing for Meng on Friday, it was revealed that U.S. prosecutors want her to face charges of fraud linked to the circumvention of sanctions on Iran. It was already known that it had something to do with sanctions on Iran. Now we know that it's fraud. Uh, White House Trade Advisor Peter Navarro said the arrest of Meng has nothing to do with trade talks. EU Tech Commissioner Andres Onsip uh, said he thinks the EU needs to be worried about Huawei and other Chinese companies because of requirements to cooperate with Chinese intelligence services and said Chinese companies produce chips to, quote, get our secrets. Now, he, he made this announcement on the day of Meng's bail hearing. So uh, th this wasn't just an accidental thing. I imagine this is a bit of piling on. Huawei denies, of course, that it poses a security threat and denies it has ever been asked to build a backdoor or an interrupt into any networks. Uh, that is something that some US companies can't say. Sources told Reuters, Japan will restrict government purchases of products that have security concerns. They won't name names, but it will result in government contracts in Japan not being able to use products from Huawei and ZTE. Germany said it will not exclude any manufacturers from building 5G networks. Belgian newspapers say that country is considering banning Huawei telecom equipment in its projects. And the EU is launching an investigation into Chinese investments and forced technology transfer in Europe. So, uh, you know, with, with some of these some of these things, like the Japanese things, may have been in the works already and just happen to come out right now. But the EU tech commissioner chooses when he decides to make this announcement, and he's making it right now when the spotlight is on Huawei about all of this. Yeah, of course he is. I mean, well, not not to ruffle any feathers or anything, but the I've been following the Huawei story pretty closely, especially since the the Bloomberg uh, chip story came out and you know things of that nature. And we still don't have any public facing information that says Huawei has done anything um, that would be a security or privacy concern straight to the U.S. So it's very hard for me to look at this story and say like you know other than you know Meng's uh, the current thing that she's going through aside to say like, yes, we should ban all Huawei products or yes, we should ban all ZTE products because we don't have that information to confirm it. And that's coming from a security and privacy standpoint, at which point I'm generally quite paranoid about the products that I use. And I just don't have that information to tell me that I shouldn't be looking at these products with the same equal bias that I give to any other product. The only thing I know of uh, is the UK is undergoing an investigation right now regarding the software that right. is pushed to these because they found some abnormal behavior 
in real life use of Huawei security or Huawei networking products that they didn't notice in testing. And so they're trying to figure out why that is. That's far from a smoking gun. That's, hey, we see this anomaly, we need to check it out. Maybe it leads to something, but at this point, like you say, there is nothing solid about this. Well, we know for a fact that Cisco routers had problems with them. I, I'm not trying to let anybody off the hook here, but these are the facts that we know. Yeah, absolutely. And we need to look at those facts, uh, you know, as they come out and definitely make sure that we keep all of them into consideration. But right now we just don't have that information. Um, with with Ming's thing, it's, it's pretty interesting. And I'm definitely going to be following this really closely because uh, it is something to concern ourselves with. Uh, but at the moment, it's, it's such the beginning of a story that we just don't have that info. Yeah. This is uh this is you know if if you missed yesterday's show and you want a a deeper discussion of all of this and the political implications and all that check out DTNS from yesterday. So moving on, uh, Reuters reports a source tells it Amazon is looking at bringing its cashierless Amazon Go stores to airports. Public records show Amazon has met with several U.S. airports as possible locations for the stores, including Lax and San Jose International. Amazon has opened seven stores since January in Chicago, San Francisco, and Seattle near office buildings. Hey, now stop calling LAX Lax. We're, we're, I was gonna, they're sorry. Very, they're yeah, very yeah, upright. Yeah. They work really hard over there. <laughs> they are lax on a lot of the things that they, they do. <laughs> so it's actually kind of a You're genius right. way to. I'm going to start calling it's it lax. Just like with <laughs> ORD, I call it ORD. <laughs> It's just something weird I do. I, I call it a word. Is it not called a word? Well, thank you. <laughs> well, I'm good. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Uh, I, I've been to an Amazon Go store and it was a really great experience. And knowing how, you know, sometimes you're running late trying to get to your next flight and knowing that sometimes the, the meals on flights are not so great and you just want to check out really fast. Uh, they do have some really great options in the Amazon Go store as far as like pre-cooked meals that you can purchase as well as really nice like even vegan and GMO uh, free products that people can buy that are very friendly to dietary restrictions. So it seems like a very awesome idea to put the Amazon Go stores in uh, your international airports. That oh yeah, great. I mean, as somebody who's, I sometimes I'm not running late, but I often am running late for a flight. Um, and I also, you know, if it's morning, I need a coffee, you know, and I haven't had time to get it at home before I, you know, get on the plane or, whatever it is, anything that may cut down on that line of five people ahead of me at the coffee bean, we were like, oh, God, <laughs> I really want this food, but I got to get on, you know, got to get to my gate. I think the airport is the perfect place for this. And it's not just, oh, it's friction free. And, you know, you don't, you don't have to talk to a person. It's just time saving. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I will say when I when I went to the ghost store, there were a lot of employees there that were still kind of training the general public about how you use the ghost store. You have to download a separate application entirely. You have to scan it on the way in. So you do have to teach people how to use it. But I mm -hmm. think down the line, once enough people understand how to use it, kind of like we do with mobile payments now at stores, which is generally accepted, uh, then it would be extremely fast and you would not have as much confusion in the future, but we still need some time to get there. Yeah. I have my TripIt, my Delta app, and now yep. my Amazon app ready to go as I'm holding my phone in my hand, running through the airport. Totally. <laughs> TechCrunch sources confirm a report by Music Business Worldwide that Apple has acquired Platoon, a London startup that uses analytics to find musicians and then help those musicians distribute their work. The co-founder and CEO of Platoon, Denzel Feigelson, also confirmed the news on LinkedIn. Feigelson used to work at iTunes as an executive, so they probably knew each other like well enough to years, think that yeah. this was a very good acquisition to make. And it does, uh, if you read the story, it does uh, appear that Apple is is acquiring uh, this company, not just hiring. You know, the, there's the aqua hire where they're like, sure. well, we're not really buying the company. We just wanted these people to work here. They, they want this system, uh, which implies that Apple wants to, in some way, at least do A&R, which is, you know, acquiring talent, if not be a label. Well, and analytics like this um, can, it, you know, it's certainly if, if you're a smaller musician um, and talented and and the sort of analytics would would help you uh, um, expand your reach. Great. 
that could also apply to Apple's podcast section. I mean, the analytics here, mm. um, you know, if it's robust and uh, helps connect people with other people who want to pay for good things being done, uh, makes a lot of sense for Apple so that it's not just a matter of big labels and Apple working with them, which we've known for a long time. Apple's been kind of, you know, hinting around trying to trying to branch out into into other avenues. That's a really good point, because Platoon uh, apparently also works with non musicians. They work with writers. So you could feed people into the iBooks store, too. Exactly. Uh, promote those. That's um, eh, it's it's another sign of Apple being ready to transition away from being a product based company to a services based company, too. Folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to our other show, DailyTechHeadlines.com. All right. Microsoft President Brad Smith asked governments in a speech to regulate facial recognition technology in order to protect personal privacy and avoid discrimination and surveillance. He made this speech at the Brookings Institution. Smith said, and I'm going to quote him here, we believe that the only way to protect against this race to the bottom is to build a floor of responsibility. Ooh. Good phrase, right? You Poetic, know, race Brad. to the bottom. We're going to put a floor yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's almost Reagan esque. Uh, a floor of responsibility that supports healthy market co competition. So he's like, we, we don't want the government to pick winners and losers. We just want, we want a floor that says you, you can't do irresponsible things. And these, this is what they are. Uh, Smith said, we must ensure that the year 2024 doesn't look like a page from the novel 1984. Like, does he have a campaign speechwriter? Love it. On this kind of stuff? Uh, Smith said laws should require human review of facial recognition results. And if facial recognition is being used to identify a consumer, the law should make sure the consumers know explicitly when and how it's ha happening. He also advocates requiring search warrants for the use of facial recognition. He outlined six principles. He said facial recognition use should be fair, transparent, accountable, non-discriminatory, include notice and consent, and only lawful surveillance. That's where the warrant comes in. Uh, and Microsoft plans to publish a document next week suggesting ways to implement facial recognition regulations that serve those six principles. I love this. <laughs> This is the kind of regulation where, and, and I'll be the first to say, I'm not always a big fan of having government regulation in technology, uh, especially like with the recent Australian bill that passed with encryption. Like that's a great example. But when it comes to regulating for consumer privacy and security, this is big news. And this is the kind of thing I would love to see in other form factors of technology, not just facial recognition, but things like IoT for consumers. That's a great example. Um, other ways that you're you're able to track what you're doing. Uh, this is, it's, it's good regulation, or it's a good idea. I just hope that technology uh, companies will look at this and extremely seriously consider it because I, I and and also consumers as well. I hope that consumers consider it too whenever they're making purchases. Yeah, Amazon has been in hot water for providing some facial recognition technology to do a police department in Orlando, uh, and not really wanting to talk about it a lot. Uh, and and that's in opposition to what Microsoft is pushing here. Like you need to be transparent. Tell people what it does. Tell people where and when it's being used. It can still be used. And I think that's one of the interesting things when I think about facial recognition. A lot of times the balance with, with surveillance technology or law enforcement technology is if people know it's being used, then they'll avoid it and they're less likely uh, and it's less likely to be effective. Facial recognition, I mean, for the most part, if it's out there, even if you know it's there, if you need to go to that location, then I don't know, I guess you try to put on a mask and try to fool it, but you might be doing that anyway if you just know that facial recognition exists. So I'm not sure knowing it's being used in an area reduces the effectiveness as much as it might in other technologies. Well, this is also coming from Microsoft, right? And Tom, you mentioned Amazon. I mean, if Brad Smith is saying publicly, listen, we need government regulation or this is going to get real out of hand and we're going to you know look like a dystopian society from the book 1984 before we know it i think that there's you know in many cases uh large companies such as microsoft and amazon and facebook and google and uh, apple and whoever else would get together and perhaps form a consortium of companies that 
have all decided that we agree on, you know, what's the right and 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 um, moral way to move forward with this. It does not sound like Microsoft believes that its competitors are on the same page, and that's why they're going in this direction. Yeah, uh, there are lots of other industries that that they could be pushing for this too. So, I mean, it's mm -hmm. interesting that they picked facial recognition to to be the leader. There are there are lots of surveillance issues, obviously with encryption, which Microsoft has fought against in other arenas uh, with, with AI. In fact, uh, France and Canada announced plans for the International Panel on Artificial Intelligence to promote the responsible adoption of AI that is in their words, human-centric and grounded in human rights, inclusion, diversity, innovation, and economic growth. And it's interesting, that sort of parallels Microsoft's announcement here, where it said, uh, we want a responsible floor of regulation that still allows market competition. All of these statements are saying, we still we don't want to hurt the economic innovation of stuff. We just want to make sure that we preserve human rights, which I think really is a reaction to a lot of the controversies around social networks where things just plowed ahead. And even if it's just the perception of trampling on human rights, people are upset that it wasn't included from the beginning. I think in both cases, the AI and the facial recognition, the industry as a whole has an instinct that, okay, maybe we need to talk about this now before it becomes a problem. I was wondering why they started talking about facial recognition now, and I think you hit the nail on the head because facial recognition has been used, uh, for example, in casinos for years and years. I mean, we, we're we definitely getting our face tracked every time we go to CES every year, and, and knowing that that technology has been out there for so long, it does make sense that it would happen right now because we are getting so much more in tune with uh, our own human rights when it comes to technology. And at a time when facial recognition is getting good. Exactly. Uh, when, you know, the facial recognition in the casinos was okay. <laughs> and it was expensive. Yeah, it's not the best technology. Yeah, and you, you needed to be there. as rich as a casino <laughs> to afford it, or at least to have an interest uh, that was as rich as theirs. Uh, so, so now when you can just, you know, provide it as a cloud service, potentially, uh, and and it becomes much more widely available. I mean, that's that's all internet innovation disruption has followed that problem that that system where the rules that worked when it was available but only available on a limited basis because of cost or accessibility don't necessarily work when it suddenly scales and now everybody can access it yeah absolutely and it, it was interesting in the story too um how he mentioned what one of the principles is transparency and i'm glad he included that because one of the examples they gave was a classroom that they're using this in to track uh, student emotions and then give that information to the teacher and they even mentioned in the story that uh, they might not even be sharing this information with students or at least that hasn't been determined yet so so having that area of concern uh, when you know several people are involved and they might not even know that they're being tracked, I would be much more comfortable as a consumer, even as a student, if that information is transparent to me so I know what's going on when I'm there. Yeah, there's yeah, an organization. Or as a, or as a parent of that student. Yeah, certainly. absolutely. Uh, an organization called AI Now is issuing a report calling on companies to waive their trade secrecy that if it would get in the way of public accountability. Uh, not saying that they don't get the trade secrecy, they're saying, hey, you companies, in this case, you should, in in the interest of public good and being a good corporate citizen, wade your trade secrecy if it comes into conflict with with being able to tell the public what's being done. Because sometimes, you know, trade secrets are widely protected uh, on the on the farthest reaches that you can interpret them in order to make sure something doesn't leak through. I think AI has done a great job as an industry of being transparent and open sourcing things and and allowing uh, the public to see exactly how it works. Uh, and, and, and so maybe facial recognition could take a tip from that too. Well, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. There are lots of facial recognition stories there and others as well. You can join the group, submit stories, and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Head on over to Facebook as well if you hang out there, facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. You know what we have? I'm so glad. Chris Christensen is back. The amateur traveler has some news of a cruise ship powered by dead fish. This is Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler with another Tech in Travel Minute. I was interested to see that Hurtgruten, which is not only a fun cruise line to say, but one that runs up the coast of Norway and other exploration places, has announced that they're going to be powering their cruise ships, at least in part, with dead fish. 
They're going to be using biogas as fuel, which is derived from dead fish, at least in part for these vessels, to make them more eco-friendly using a renewable fuel source. Now, there was no mention of whether these fish had lived a long and happy life and whether they had died under mysterious circumstances, but it's still a great step forward. I'm Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler. Yes, tell us more about these fish. Were they killed by the boat and then <laughs> sucked That's in? That's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or are they are they the koi in the pond that they just, you know, live a long and happy life and naturally, you know, pass away? Um, hey, everybody, let's check out the mailbag. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> this one comes from Tony Wang. Shannon and Tom and I have all worked with Tony in the past, um, back in the twit days. Tony says, I bought the iPhone 10 for my wife for her birthday, and after two months of use, I asked her how she likes the phone, and she hates Face ID. Yes, Tony's wife, I'm with you. Uh, she was previously an iPhone 7 user, so she can't check her phone and play around with her phone now while she's in a meeting because now she has to hold her phone up to her face to unlock the phone. Can't be clandestine about it. Just thought I'd write in to let Sarah know that she's not the only person who hates Face ID. I do want to make a prediction that in three years, Apple will bring back Touch ID as an in-screen fingerprint scanner and call it Touch ID 2 Max Plus. <laughs> yeah, not so wait, prediction. as an Android user over here who doesn't follow iPhone news, you can only unlock your phone with Face ID? On you the can new use iPhone. passcodes. But you can the, use the password. There's no button oh, anymore. Yeah. There's no touch ID to be had. Now, oh. Tony, Tony is he's agreeing with me because I've been complaining lately about the fact that, like, sure, if my phone's right here, you know, as long as we're doing this, works fine. Yeah. But there are many times I got a big old, I got a big old, you know, 10x, uh, 10, uh, 10x, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Whatever. It's a big phone. It's, a real big <laughs> phone. it's a big phone. And so when it's on the table, you know, and I'm kind of, yeah, you, you know, maybe that. doing stuff in the peripheral vision, it doesn't work anymore. So I'm entering my passcode a hundred times a day where I've been used to doing that never for three years. Oh, yeah. They should go one pluses route and do the in, in screen fingerprint sensor. That's one of the best things ever. Well, Tony, I think you might be onto something. Cilantro. That's all I'm saying. It's cilantro. <laughs> it is. Yeah. You either love it or you don't. Yep. Uh, let's check in with known cilantro lover, Len Peralta, <laughs> who has been illustrating the show. I love cilantro. You have, how do you know this such a Cilantro's much? biggest fan. Len, <laughs> Len, what have you been drawing? Well, you know, I was so taken by the line, 2024 will not be 1984. Is that sort of what I did for today's uh, image? I really felt like it was it. very dystopian, a little <laughs> bit scary. And uh, I played with a lot of shadows of this one, which I thought was probably kind of cool. So uh, um, you can pick this up in my online store, which is uh, is always a fun thing. Plus, I haven't been on the show for a little while, so I haven't. I've been really busy working on um, custom drawn holiday cards. I'm still doing them if you want until December twentieth, and this is a special for DTNS listeners only. Ooh. You can use the discount code DTNS at checkout to save twenty bucks off. The cards. Ooh, very so, nice. Yes. Very cool. So, yes, listener. Uh, go do that right now. It's not too late. Get in. Get in. Yes. Also, thanks to Shannon Morris for being with us on Friday. See, when Len comes back, I get all discombobulated. <laughs> I'm just like sort of like into the artwork. Shannon, art. good to see you again as well. And let folks know where they can keep up with all the other work that you do every week and every day and every hour and every minute. <laughs> Quite well, honest. thank you, Sarah and Tom. Uh, if you do have Patreon supporters, they get a nice little security spiel from me every week that's included on the DTNS Patreon. And if you're a patron of Threatwire, you also get a security bulletin every week from DTNS Tom and Sarah, which is awesome. Love it. Uh, but if you're interested in my shows, Threatwire, I just talked about the crazy Marriott Starwood specifically database that was stolen. That was huge news. And if you're curious, if you are a part of that, definitely go over there to Threatwire because I broke down the whole thing. And my other big show is Tech Thing, TekThing.com. And I just reviewed the DJI Osmo Mobile 2, which I am currently using for all of my Vlogmas videos because I am a vlogger on my personal YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured I would review that crazy little gimbal thing because apparently I'm a gimbal person. Yeah. I never knew this about myself till now. <laughs> gimbal girls. 
<laughs> yeah. So, and thank you to everybody who watches my shows. I appreciate it. Excellent. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Len. And uh, thank you folks for supporting us. If you don't know this already, the $5 level is kind of the magic level of the DTNS Patreon. Uh, there's so much just this week that you get if you're a patron at that level. You get to choose an all feed that lets you get both Good Day Internet and just DTNS. You can decide whether you want to listen to just the DTNS show or the entire pre and post show. You get a column from Roger with his secret algorithm for deciding whether to buy something on a holiday deal. Uh, you get an editor's desk uh, this week of me in audio describing how I use Feedly and how I pick stories for the show. Uh, you get so much. There's, there's a, as Shannon mentioned, an audio bulletin going into the Starwood uh, Marriott hack from earlier this week that Shannon posted for us. It's all at patreon.com slash DTNS. Go become a member now. We could not do this without your feedback. You help make our show stronger. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com is where to send those emails. We're also live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2130 UTC. And find out more and spread the word. Dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back on Monday. Talk to you then. Have a good weekend, everybody. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Time Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Great show, you guys. Yay. Yay. Good show. Woo, 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 woo. Woo, woo. That was good. It's only two minutes over. Sorry, I'm a talker. No, it was good. You guys are tight. There's a lot of information. You guys, you guys covered a lot of it. A lot of it. A lot of it. A lot, a lot, a lot. It's a lot of it. <laughs> what if you just enunciate everything in your throat? Uh, uh, <laughs> a lot, a, a lot. You know what you do with vowels? Uh, what should we call this episode? Good morning, Julia. Good morning, <laughs> Julia. No, Good morning, no, Julia. no. Um, <laughs> building a floor of responsibility. <laughs> That's a good one, Captain oh Jack. Goodness. AI is just fun and games. AI, AI what? is just fun and games. Oh, yes. AI is just fun and games. Building a floor of responsibility. <laughs> oh, I had to put my thumb out. Building a floor of responsibility. <laughs> well, 1984, me 2024. Wait, <laughs> 2024 be like that? You know what I mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. So you want to do building a floor responsibility? Sure. I like that. You seemed you mentioned it um, uh, a couple of times. So. No, I'm just repeating it as a as a as a bit. Uh, no, it's good. I like that one. Okay. I'm in. Sarah likes it. You like it. I like it. We all like it. Yay! Well, Captain Jack like nine thirteen. You have won Friday. Congratulations! You get. Whoa. A Oh, wow. But we used it before? No. Uh, sorry, you're not seeing why I'm what I'm reacting to. I uh, upgraded to WordPress 5, the new thing, which has been a controversial upgrade. And it's my first time seeing oh, what it looks like. Those are always yeah. fun. You know, I actually saw that this morning uh, when I was in there for headlines. And I was like, hmm, I'm just going to go ahead and not do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and. That's. Not that's kind of the whatever this I had towards the to be problematic. Have y'all seen the new Creator Studio on YouTube? Yeah. Ah, oh, terrible. <sighs> <laughs> well, oh. it wasn't like it was that great to begin with. Yeah, but you know what? I knew where everything was, and yeah, uh, yeah. It was, yeah. it's just bad. Uh, you just okay. have to figure out where everything is all over again. Uh, yeah. This is a great, uh, a great reason you should listen to my editor's desk. Uh, episode this week because I talked about my reaction to Feedly redesigning and mm -hmm. talked about like I, I stopped myself and said wait how much of my anger is actual legitimate problems how much of it is just not liking change because now I have to learn a different way of doing things but eventually it won't matter because I'll learn the new way and how much of it is features that I don't think are there but actually are there they just got moved to a different place mm, good point yeah. Every time I log into Xbox Live, they've redesigned the interface, and I can't find anything. <laughs> the, the past few times has, haven't been as abrupt. <laughs> That's the worst.
Yeah, it's all right. It works. I mean, I don't use my Xbox anymore since I got my shield, but. <laughs> oh, does it do? Oh, no, there we go. Everything is in a different place. It is It is disconcerting, though. Like, mm-hmm. I'm slower on things when, when it changes so much, when the interface changes that much, because I, I suddenly have to think about where everything is. Well, and it's also like, you know, I, I know, you know, our first reaction is like, we hate it. It's different. Mm-hmm. But, but, but there were, you know, probably yeah. a whole team of people who put a lot of thought into why it should be different. Patreon did that a couple of times. We're like moving, moving the post button. And I'm like, where is the schedule? Where is it? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Help me. I don't know. I'm stupid. <laughs> You're not stupid. I'm dumb help me well i think i think for a lot of us where it's like there are certain you know you've got you you know making content is the the creative part of it and you just that's the way that you do it and as soon as that gets disrupted your (laughs) your whole your whole workflow now has to be like re um you know you have to relearn it i know for me it's like if you change one thing i'm completely discombobulated and i'm and i'm furious but then i went through this recently with photoshop and i don't know if anybody really uses photoshop a lot but when you would need to scale something ah yeah you would you would have to hit apple t and i'm like what is going on like i would scale it was just like you know muscle memory you know to do it I looked it up and they're like, oh no, all you have to do is just use the scale button and it just automatically scales it for you without moving. I'm like, why would you change That's that? so funny because Scott Johnson just on Wednesday was complaining about a different thing they changed <laughs> yeah. where shift used to constrain and now uh-huh. you, you yep. don't use shift or you <laughs> shift to unconstrain. It's like the yes. act. They, they, they changed it and it's like, why did you do that? It's just... It, it it was like for for a couple of weeks I was like what what is going on is this broken or something was something wrong with my computer terrible I but I do think some of it is like right now I'm slower at this blog post because things are in a different place and my muscle memory doesn't work anymore mm-hmm. it's right. not that it's bad it's not that you the design is worse it. in fact the yeah. design is probably better once I get used to it and after a week or two. I will get used to it and it will be net positive. I have no doubt. But today I'm angry because it's like, oh, I feel like I'm swimming in jello. Yeah. Like I, yeah. that thing is no, where it's, it's supposed to be. Ooh, it's the worst. Jello swimming. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I just made Roger hungry. <laughs> right. I you know, bought, I, I think I have to go get my daughter. <laughs> that's I'm pretty true. sure I do. Sure that's true, but the no, way you said it was like, I think I have to go wash my hair. No, wait, when you, when my you daughter's been done. swimming in Jello all afternoon. <laughs> She's swimming in Jello. I gotta go get her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. When you mentioned Jello, I realized my daughter's been in her Jello bath. <laughs> no, it's not that head at all. It has nothing to do with it. That that was just something I realized. I looked at my uh, I looked at my little watch here, and I thought, oh. Yeah, no worries. No worries. You say hello, Julia. Thank you, Len. Yes. It's so good to see you again. <laughs> it's good to oh, see you meant, too. I meant to tell you, like this, your your art's always good, but this is one of those universal ones where you don't even have to watch the show. You're gonna look at this yeah. this one and be like, oh, I get it. Like this I, is really, I, really yeah, good. Yeah, I wanted to do something that was um well, it's really hard because of the coming back. I want to do something that's like, oh wow, that's really, really super cool. But just the just the lights and everything else, I think mm-hmm. was kind of dramatic and felt pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. And now in return, you can go watch Good Morning Julia all week. <laughs> over and over. Show it to Eileen. Let me know what she thinks about it, honestly. All right. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I, Tell I her the backstory a... for, before you show it to her, though. Like, Should I? That... Yes. No, you need to because there, that puts it in the context of like how, you know, bat crap insane this guy is. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so he's not in control of his own mental faculties. <laughs> he's, he's, he doesn't, he didn't, he didn't really think. Because everybody, that's the thing about. I, I have to go actually, but this is. But I'll, what I'll say about this is that I think every guy is as is Joe has been Joe in some part of their lives. Like mm, you, you find lovely. someone attractive, you want to talk to them, mm-hmm. but you got to be cool about it. And he's not cool about it at all. That's like not uh, cool. Hmm. Hmm. Do you agree with that, Roger? No, you, you sound like a defense attorney. 
I don't look. I'm not defending Joe. I think Joe gets what he needs. Like right, like these, he gets proper shame here. We've all been Joe at one time, haven't we? <laughs> well, in our mind, probably. Hopefully, none of us have gone past that line and left a a, a, a young woman a, a really odd message. But uh, you know, it's just it's just bad. You got to just be cool about it. Dude. Your Jello daughter is waiting for you. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> Good morning, Roger. See you later. All right. ah, See you life. guys later. Bye, Len. Bye. Enjoy Bye. 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 So I'm thinking of doing a hat tournament. What does that mean? Is that like magic? <laughs> magic? Do we have to fight or something with our hats? Fight with your hats. My, my, <laughs> my, I spent so much time with my DTNS hat in the rain yesterday. I was like, you know, I got to reshape this guy a little bit. So I didn't mm. wear it during the show, but... Well, but, um, tell me more about this tournament, Tom. Yeah, the idea would be I have you know, close to 140 hats over here. And mm -hmm. what I've been doing is in the Discord every Friday, I take a picture of three of them and I put them up for a vote. The one that gets the, the most vote differential is the one I wear. The one that gets the second most vote, I put halfway back so it'll come back up faster because it got a decent amount of votes. And then the one that was last goes at the very end. So I'm thinking instead of doing a tournament where it's just two hats every Friday and whoever wins moves on to the next round. So I have a hat tournament going on until there is one victor hat at some point. And you'll call it the quickening. The happening. The happening. I realize I've stunned you now with this idea. And then the winner <laughs> will no, be able to have children and a normal life it's uh as old guy in our discord says it would be the hat trick ah i don't play hockey what um, does that mean? so I, i'm 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 at a loss to understand whether you think it's a good or a bad idea <laughs> oh cricket and it, it started in cricket, cricket is what i'm hearing on this hat tournament idea Three wickets taken by a bowler and three consecutive balls, traditionally rewarded with the presentation of a hat. Thank you, Wicker Roger. Just trying to, trying to figure out what that means. Hat trick. All right. So Sarah and uh -uh. Shannon are just being too polite. Sorry. I <laughs> to tell me that my hat idea is <laughs> I horrible. Think, I think more hats are mo better. <laughs> I agree. I like hats. Do you, do you like the tournament idea, or is that silly? Yes. <laughs> yes, it's silly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Correct. Yes, it's a good silly idea. It is silly. It is. You know it's it's a, yeah, it's a good silly that idea. That, yeah, that, that mean bad. That's fun. All right, all right, all right. Can I tell you a joke? Does Odie so, want a hat? You know how the Grammys always do, like, these are all the surprises and all the people that got snubbed. So BBC World on Twitter tweeted, hashtag Grammys 2019, snubs and surprises. Oh. So I replied to them and I was like, thanks for the shout out. <laughs> they did at yes. snubs? No, but I just like oh. tweeted at them. But it's, like, yeah, it's, like a, it's like a Google alert. Yeah, yeah. What, what are, what, um, what what does that mean? Oh, like so and so should have been nominated for the best record of the year, yeah. that kind of right. thing. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, I um was looking through Golden Globe noms, and boy, do I have a lot of stuff to watch, and I watch a lot of stuff. <laughs> I, I would say I'm like pretty up on most series. There's certain series that I, I decide not to watch. For, you know, on purpose because it's not my thing. But it's like, how are there so many like, like, widely regarded as like wonderful series and movies that I just haven't seen? I have work to do. This happens every year, by the way. Out. Every year, I'm like, what? I mean, <laughs> how much harder can I try? I'm trying really hard. I watch a lot of TV. How have I missed any? Yeah. I mean, that's all I do every night. I mean, it's that's a, that's like a separate activity, like more so than it used to be, like because there's just so many things. It's almost yeah. a chore. Well, so for example, marvelous Mrs. Maisel, right? Mm -hmm. New new season out. Um, people love that show. I watched the first couple episodes of the first season, and I was like, eh, 
for whatever reason, it just wasn't speaking to me. Haven't sure, revisited it. But it doesn't mean it's bad. Right. I'm sure it's actually really good. And I'd probably like it if I gave it another chance, but I'm just watching other things. But now it's like, that's all I'm hearing about. And now I feel left out. So then it becomes this weird thing where I'm like, do I have to watch this tonight? Like, because I don't want to, I don't get too behind because it's going to win a bunch of awards. And that, then I'm going to, you know, wish that I had an opinion whether or not I thought it deserved them. Mm hmm. Yeah, I always feel that way about the Oscars too. Like I want to I want to have watched at least all the best picture nominees, right? Right. And well, and there's like 9 of them now. So, it's yeah. harder than ever. There's 10, isn't there? There literally is 10. No? I thought it was 9. I mean, you might be right. Well, yeah, there are a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there, you know, some of them are movies where I'm like, yeah, I got to get to that. I meaning to I'll, I'll get to that before the oscars and then there are others where i'm like i've never even heard of this movie. so oscar movies have to hit the theaters before the end of december to to get consideration right and uh and they have to have a theater run that's 90 mm -hmm. days so mm -hmm. presumably they're all out in december why not make them all available on demand well, i guess it's still too late you can't keep the 90 day window and have them all available on demand before no. I mean, if they're out earlier than December, then you can. That's why some of them do come out on demand. It, what I'm saying is it would be great if they all had second theater runs and were all available on demand like the week before the Oscars. So you could just binge on all of them if you want. And and people would want to go to the theaters because the, the people who really like movies like that would want to do that. Yeah, if there was some... Um temporary subscription VOD thing mm -hmm. where it's just like best be picture nice. nominees. I will buy this for one week. Yeah. You know, yeah. get on it. Someone. Uh, well, video folks, we were, we are going to have uh, everything I could think of to say is inappropriate. Thanks for watching. <laughs> uh, audio folks stick around. There's more to come.